Now that we've installed the HyperR plugin for Grasshopper, we can get to making our first HyperR function in Grasshopper. So I'm going to go to the HyperR menu and choose Login to HyperR. Again, this requires that you already have a HyperR account established. So I'm going to click Login. And this should fire up a browser and allow me to sign in to my account. So over here, uh, I can say sign in with the currently logged in user, or I can sign in as a different user. This is the one that I want to use. And once that's done, we should be logged in. And if you return to that hyper menu, you should see logged in as uh, and you have the option to open the HyperR panel, which is the next thing we're going to do. So go ahead and open the HyperR panel, and this will sort of guide us through the steps of creating a function. So I want to create a new function, and uh, for this it's also useful to be logged in to your HyperR account. If you just click this here, it might ask you to log in, so let's do that. I'll go to my account and click Sign In. And what I want to do is set up and configure the function that I want to create. So this is going to be my box function, and I'll give it a useful description. It creates a box. And I can set up the inputs and controls that I want this function to have. So I'll drag in a range for a sort of number slider, and I'll set this to be the width. And because this is representing like a length value, I want to set its unit type to length so it'll show up in either meters or feet. And you can toggle between the preview of meters or feet by switching this. But the important thing to know is that the value when it comes into your Grasshopper script will always be in meters. So I prefer to kind of start in meters even if I'm, I'm thinking in feet. I'll add one more input here. You can add other kinds of inputs. For, for now, we'll just start with these number sliders. I'll call this length. And I'll make this one a unit of length as well, and click Next. Um, this section, Connections, is for how your function connects to other functions, which we'll cover in a later tutorial. And Outputs is where we can specify any like data that we want to produce with our function. So let's just create a number, which will be the volume, and we'll call it the volume of the box, and set its unit type to volume as well, so it will render in meters squared uh, or meters cubed or cubic feet. And we'll click Next and click Publish Function. And before we exit from this dialog, we want to make sure that we copy this ID. And then we can return to Grasshopper. So if I flip back over to my Grasshopper window, it's been sitting here patiently waiting for me to finish so that I can paste that ID of the value that I just created. And this is going to pull in information about the function that I just configured. So those inputs that I decided I needed have now become part of the values in this inputs function. And then the output that I specified volume has been added to this outputs component. So I can now basically construct the in-between here to specify the logic of how I take these values, create something, and pass it back out to HyperR. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create just like a box using the center box component here. And I'm going to use the width and the length as the box dimension. And I'm going to get, I'm going to use box properties in order to get out the volume. I could also just, you know, do some multiplication. One of these outputs is the volume. I'll pass that out to my volume. And I also want to pass out the box itself to this special model output. This is where any of the geometry that you want to see in the HyperR sort of 3D environment should be. So let's go ahead and pass box into there. And uh, this will automatically convert to like a mesh element. We'll talk about elements a little bit later. But we're basically ready to go. Uh, we can now publish this function to HyperR. And first we have to save it, so I'll just say this is my box function example. And we have now actually successfully published that function to HyperR. If we log into HyperR here, And I'm going to go to create a new workflow, or I could open an existing workflow. Uh, 
I'll just create a blank one for now. And now if I go looking for this function, uh, it's right there. I have created a, a new function and I can add it to my Hypebar workspace, my workflow, and I can interact with it. I can change its dimensions here and it will pass those values uh, into the function. And the important thing to know is this is no longer executing on my computer. This is actually executing in the cloud. I have now published my Grasshopper script to the cloud as a Hypebar function. And so I can send this to anybody. I can run this on my phone. I can share it with people who are on Mac or on Windows or don't even have a copy of Grasshopper. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's the, the very bare bones of creating a function on Hypebar. Um, now, we may also want to make some changes to this. We might want to change what the inputs are. Uh, we might want to do other more advanced things. So I'll show you how to make changes to this as well. So uh, one thing we might want to do is add a new input for the height, for instance. So I'm going to, this time, instead of adding an input uh, via the controls, I'm just going to create a slider uh, and I'll set it to a value of like 50 and I'll call this height and I'll plug this into my Z. And so if I bring up my Rhino window, this is now controlling the height of that box. And if I want to make it an input on Hypebar, I can select it, go to the Hypebar menu and choose convert number slider to function input. And this will automatically add a new input to my function and handle wiring back up this slider. Um, importantly, the inputs here on the left are sort of temporary default values that you can use to just sort of test out your function. So this will actually still work. It's being passed through. But when we're executing this on Hypebar, it will ignore any of these values that are fed into the inputs. It will use whatever you choose in the actual interface. So now that I've made that change and I've sort of modified the logic here, I'm going to publish again. And I'll return to my workflow and I'll have to reload this just so that it will show me that new input. And now there's a height slider that I can adjust. So if I change the height, it will change the height of this box. Next, let's add a color control. So we could do this the same way. I could create like a swatch uh, and I could select that and publish it, convert it to a function input. But I want to show you another way to kind of modify the configuration of this function. So over here in the Hypebar panel, you can choose edit function configuration or you can double click on the inputs component. And this will bring up the web-based function editor that allows you to configure all of the settings that we set up at the beginning. So if I want to do something like add in a color input, maybe at the top, move that here, say this is my box color, color of the box. Then I can hit save changes and I can return to Grasshopper and click OK and it will pull in any changes that I made via the web interface. So now I've got a color input. And for now, just to make this easy, I'm going to use the mesh colors component and convert my box into a mesh, pass it this color value, and then pass that in here. And you'll notice that this is coming up red, and that's because there's no value yet being passed in to the color. Um, this will still work. In fact, if I just publish this, uh, it will uh, it will work when I go to refresh my workflow. So if I reload, there will be a color input, which I can now manipulate. So I can set this to be like a nice rich blue and it will color it blue. But oftentimes we have a more complex configuration of inputs and we want to be able to sort of test it against the real values that we're interacting with. Um, so for that purpose, I find it really useful to use test function on Hypebar. Um, and what that will do is let us sort of live receive the values that are coming in from the workflow. So let's do that. We'll do test function on Hypebar. Um, you can do this from scratch. So if you don't already have a workflow, you can just create a new test workflow. In my case, I'm already in an existing workflow. I've sort of created a workflow. I have a copy of this function. So I'm going to use test and an existing workflow. But otherwise, these two things will be basically the same. And 
So this says paste your test command. The information that it needs here is basically just the ID of this workflow, which we can get a few different ways. The thing that it's asking me to do is to go to the my sort of user menu and choose test a local function and copy this command, which I can paste. But as a shortcut, if you ever need to, you can also just copy the URL of the active hypar window or even just the portion that includes the ID. All of those things should work when we say connect to workflow. And when we do this, we're sort of actively monitoring the set of inputs that are present in that workflow. So that means that if I make a change over here in the web UI, like change this box to green, then it will pull those inputs in in Rhino. So it will actually show me those live changes. And this is really useful for debugging. If you run into something where it's not producing the output you expect, um, you can always go connect to that workflow, test to the specific workflow that you are encountering issues, pull in those exact values, see how that's being passed through the Grasshopper script, and uh, make corrections accordingly. And basically, anytime you make changes here, you want to like adjust the you know the, the way that this works. Um, just make sure to publish again. Um, the other thing we'll look at here, I haven't yet covered where this volume information comes out. So if we look over at the outputs tab, you can see that there's an output section labeled with your function and we can see the volume of the box. And so if I want, I can pop this out and make a little custom dashboard with the data that's coming out of this function. And it, as I make changes, it will update the values for the output as well. Um, I realize here I made a mistake. I forgot to add length as one of the values. And just so we see how that works, if I toggle the units here from metric to imperial, then this value isn't changing, even though it's representing a meters value. So what I want to do is just edit this function. And there are a lot of different pathways here. I can go back here. I can double click this, or I can click about edit here and just make the modification directly here. So I'll go to my uh, inputs and I'll go edit function details and I'll go change this to length. The reason this isn't there is because I published it from a slider. So I hadn't yet associated a unit type. I can hit save changes. Anytime you make a change to the configuration of your function on the web, you should pull those configuration changes. That's basically what happens when you click OK on that I'm done editing dialog. So this will just pull in whatever changes those are. And now this is up to date. So there's lots more to learn about creating hyper elements, working with other functions, uh, but this basically covers it for the basics of creating a function with Grasshopper on Hypar. And so you can just start building functions as, as you like. You can start publishing them to Hypar. You can even share them with other people. If I'm really proud of my box function and I want to share it with the world, I can again click about edit go to permissions and make it public. And then other people can use my function and integrate it into their workflows. So tune in to the next video for more detailed information about how to create more sophisticated functions with Grasshopper on Hypar and how to connect in to other functions in a workflow.